This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hmm, okay. Well, somebody said, UCF Knights uh, said, they wanted me to get a big bomb, and we did. It's one of the bigger ones in the set. Made my bombs list for this set. Didn't make my top 10 bombs ever for limited video, but it did make 10 bombs for this set, and uh, it is a good one. Um, it is a little bit of a bummer that it's red-green, so we're not like guaranteed to play it, but this thing's just amazing. What makes it so great is that it very quickly uh, does a thing. So the turn you play it, provided you have at least one other creature, which is highly likely, it will immediately do something. So even if your opponent untaps and kills it, you paid four mana to get rid of a removal spell of theirs and get two plus and plus one counters. It's a great deal. And if they don't kill it, it just snowballs until they're dead. So that, you know, it's sort of a lose-lose for them in many situations. Um, if we didn't have this big bomb in the pack, what would we take? Well, um, you know, these two uncommons are both pretty nice, but it'd probably be imprisonment. I think it would be the imprisonment. Um... Yeah, so Halana and Elena are really good. Uh, Circle of Confinement is quite good. You know, it's not in a color of a card we just took. Um, and that can be something we think about. Um, this is splashable as long as we're base green. Um, if we're just looking at red and green cards in this pack, I mean, Blood Petal Celebrant's pretty good. But it's not, like, incredible. I feel like it's enough worse like i think it's the second best card in this pack honestly after the circle so the question is whether i want to take a card that's red just because i picked a, a red green bomb or take the better card which i think is significantly better in circle of confinement that is a good question um it's very splashable too i think we take the circle i just think it's too much better than the celebrant to uh like go that route okay what do we have here? So, Markov Waltzer is quite good. And if we ended up in red-white, you know, we could try to splash Halana and Elena. That wouldn't be too crazy. Um, two pretty good red cards here. Certainly better than the ones in the last pack. Um, Hungry Ridge Wolf and the Celebrants are both uh, pretty nice commons for red decks. They're not amazing. They're certainly worse than the Waltzer. But the Waltzer being multicolored does definitely hurt it a little bit. But I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm still going to take the Waltzer here. Um... Eh, there is a Weaver of Blossoms. And I don't hate that, actually. This card's been pretty nice overall. The fixing it provides helps you play bombs that you open. And it's just a good creature in general. I think it is what I'm going to take here in the end is the Weaver. Yeah. Okay. So, this isn't a very good pack for anybody. This is You don't see a lot of packs in this format where, like, pick four there's not anything that good <laughs> but that's what we have here um yeah well cruel witness is probably the best card here uh snarling wolf is pretty good really only worth playing if you get a bunch of werewolves but uh, you know wolf werewolf payoffs lacerate flesh is okay fearful villager is okay we're probably going to take one of these just because like you know we already took we already took red and i think these two cards are better than snarling wolf I mean, if we end up in straight-up red-green, the wolf can be good, but we can always pick him up later. Um, I think I'm going to take the villager. I don't love Lacerate Flesh. It's just so inefficient. I don't love the villager either, but... Okay, so it does feel, unfortunately... You know, it's unfortunate when you first pick a bomb, but it does feel like red-green is not very open, um, and that is kind of a bummer. Uh, you know, Apprentice Sharpshooter is fine, and maybe we still take it here and see what happens. But, you know, Griff Rider is definitely better. Skull Scob definitely has a higher ceiling. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess other than that, this pack isn't that great. Um, so we'll take the Sharpshooter here and see what happens. I do like Griff Rider, but it's not, like, incredible. Okay. Well, we have a Magma Pummeler here, which is perfectly playable. But there are, again, you know, um, Griff Rider, Adamant Will, and Militia Rally are all very playable white cards. I do think I'm going to go with the Pummeler here um, in the end. But uh, keep an eye on white, you know. We may end up in, like, 
a different deck. Another Magma Pummeler. Hmm. That really sort of pushes us into kind of a slow, rampy deck, which we do already have one bit of ramp, but uh, that is interesting. Um, it's also good with plus and plus one counters, which is kind of funny. I think I'm going to take it and see what happens. I haven't actually played much with it. Um, it hasn't been, like, incredible or anything, though, I would say. Um, yeah, so we'll take, we'll take Rural Recruit here. I like it more than Daybreak Combatants. Okay. Well, green's not looking too depleted. Uh, we get a Dawnheart Disciple here. We do have Ramp and Fixing, but... The ramp and fixing here is bad enough that I'm not that interested in it. Um, okay. Well, again, not... Yeah. I think we take Parish Blade Trainee. In the event white's still open, I mean, it's a playable white card. Um, just as Circle of Confinement is. Bramble Armor is bad. Black does not look very likely for us, though. And Even though I, both of those cards are playable. I guess we could just grab one just in case. And I guess it would be Edgar's Awakening. Alright, Vampire Slayer's fine. If we, again, if we end up in white, maybe it makes the cut. Same thing. White does maybe seem to be the most open. Hmm, okay. <laughs> well, I don't quite think this thing's like a straight-up bomb, but it's obviously very good, especially when it transforms. That's the real... That's the value you're looking for. And, uh, yeah, definitely pushes us... Harder into green. It's a very good card. Just the reason it's not a bomb is, you know, the amount the the amount of um, you know, sort of effort you have to go to to actually get it to do a thing. Like if you pay it, play it face up, um, it's not <laughs> you don't have it's not going to go super well a lot of the time just because your opponent will be able to kill it. So, um, yeah, uh, just because it's so easy to kill. If you get the other side coming down first, then yeah, if it was always that, it probably would be a bomb, just because it would be a 4-mana four 4-4 four four that draws you a card, and that's that's pretty much a bomb, I feel like, but yeah. So, it is what we take here either way. Uh, it's very good. We, you know, adding more wolves and werewolves to the mix is going to make it uh, even better. Okay... Foreboding Statue is an interesting thing. We wouldn't mind finding eventually, but we definitely take Rending Flame. I mean, it's way too good of a removal spell to pass up here. So it's what we grab. Um, you know, both these red cards are fine. Wouldn't hate them wheeling. Uh, yeah, we take Rending Flame. Okay. Another Weaver of Blossoms seems pretty good in this deck. It's a wolf, werewolf thing. You know, that matters for some of our cards right now, just the, the, just the Piper, but... It's also good with Magma Pummeler, because it gives us a bunch of mana, so. Okay, so here's an Evolving Wilds, uh, which is intriguing. Um, our other options in this pack are Sawblade Slinger and Rural Recruit, pretty much. Uh, the Slinger is fine. Um, sometimes it does one of its Into the Battlefield abilities. If you do that, it's great. Um, Evolving Wilds. Meanwhile, uh, is really good fixing. I think we probably take the Wilds. I haven't liked the Stinger enough to take it over Wilds or Rural Recruit, for that matter. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, Sporeback Wolf's all right, uh, but in a world where we don't have a bunch of, like, of the cheap Wolf and Werewolf payoffs, I don't love it. I may just want to take the Celebrants here. It's been a pretty surprisingly um, good sort of top curve common. Um, yeah, I think I like it more than the Wolf here. Retrieve is interesting if we were milling ourselves, but we're not going to be. So it does get a little more interesting when you've got Evolving Wilds, I suppose. Okay, I think we take Spiked Ripsaw here. Uh, Spore Crawler is nice, but the Ripsaw turns basically anything into a threat. I've been really happy with it overall. <clears throat> so another Ripsaw... Yeah, we do need to work on our curve a lot. That's one thing <laughs> that's not looking great in our deck right now. Um, I kind of think I want the Stalker more than the Ripsaw, Ripsaw number two. They do get kind of worse in multiples because the more you're playing, the fewer creatures you have. Um, I think I like the Stalker here. Okay, so normally I think Hook Hand Mariner would be the pick, but we're desperate enough for two drops that I think we have to grab Hungry Ridge Wolf here. Which is a perfectly good two drop. Nice. So, Runebound Wolf, way better than Sporeback Wolf. We'll happily take it. 
Come on, more two drops. Um, do we grab the heirloom here just in case we end up in something really wacky? Probably. Massive Might's a nice trick. I'm not sure we're going to be aggressive enough to take advantage of it, but I feel like maybe, you know, we already have Magma Pummeler, which I think is just better than Pyre Spawn, so I don't think we really want that. Um, we'll grab an Adamant Will in case we end up in white still. Right now, I think we can splash the circle no problem between two Weavers and Evolving Wilds. So more two drops would be great. Um, you know, especially with Halana and Elena, you want to have stuff in play. <laughs> Okay, spore back wolf. Uh, we didn't have to try very hard to find a bunch of two drops in that pack, which was good, because it wasn't looking good about five picks ago. <laughs> Our two drops were like non-existent, basically. Magma pummelers aren't really two drops. Ooh. So we do get another on-color rare. It's not like amazing, though, in limited. Um, I do love that in constructed, it's being played like alongside primeval titan in modern, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but it's mostly just a big trampler, uh, which isn't bad, but, you know, you don't get to do the thing with it often enough, you know, where you draw a card and stuff, uh, that I don't think it's that great, um, even though it's cool. Uh, yeah, and that's true, ramping also not great with it, oddly enough. So Ridge Wolf or Flourishing Hunter is what we're looking at here. I think we need two drops enough that I'm going to take the Ridge Wolf over the Hunter. I would love a Hunter, but... Right now, I think I'm happy with the Ridge Wolf. Wow. It's always, you know, it happens. You know, variance happens in booster packs where this is pick two, and these are really our only two options. We do have enough mana to splash whatever we want, so we could consider something like Grizzly Ritual or Valorous Stance. Um, Fearful Villager is fine. Stance, Stance is pretty good. Um, I think I probably end up taking it here. We might splash both of those white cards. Hello. So, very happy to get a child of the pack here. It is interesting, you know, they decided to make the red-green rare not a werewolf. Um, you never know. Sometimes they go, like, really on theme and sometimes they don't with like rares that are in a certain color pair. So another Ridge Wolf seems pretty good. We've got a lot of wolves. I think it'll be better than Dawnheart Disciple. Yeah, we have 10 wolves and werewolves. We have 10 humans too, but I think Ridge Wolf is just better overall anyway. So I'm gonna grab it. Ooh, Pack Song Pup. That's a big get here. Does make me wish I'd picked up one of those one mana werewolf or wolves, but we still have enough wolves and werewolves that this is gonna do some serious work. I think we've sort of turned back into a pretty aggressive deck after kind of not starting out that way, uh, which is interesting. Okay, here's a Snarling Wolf, so I'm getting what I want. Uh, we'll grab the Snarling Wolf. We may end up not playing these Magma Pummelers the way this deck has shifted here late. I th we probably do, I guess. Maybe we just play one. I don't know. Um, but suddenly, we want a very low curve. Um, Hook Hand Mariner. I'm glad I get one here because I had to take a two-drop over it earlier um yeah i mean the pummelers are kind of awkward the way our curve has turned out in the end here so i think we kind of are a massive might deck now um question is whether i want hook hand mariner more probably not a second one more than i want eh you know, I think we do. It's a good enough four drop. Its evasiveness comes up way too much that I think we just I think we just go for it with the Mariner there. Okay, so these cards are none of them are especially good. I mean they're all okay. I kinda think I'm gonna take the hunter. It is a rampier card, but I don't think any of these are gonna make the cut anyway, so uh yeah, we'll grab an heirloom. Why not? And a Bramble Armor. This is going to be interesting to trim, because it felt for a while like we were going to be a slower deck, and then we sort of did what you hope a Werewolf deck does, which is, you know, be aggressive. <laughs> so, I don't know that we want the Magma Pummelers. They do seem really awkward now. They're just sad. I mean, you kind of, that's part of what the problem with this card has been overall. I mean, yeah, it's easy to look at it and think about, like, the two-for-oneness of it all. Uh, 
but it's just so inefficient sometimes that in this format, the fact that that's a decent two drop to pick up late. The fact that it um, I already have a massive might, which is good. The fact that it is so inefficient sometimes really just really just causes you serious problems. Um, if you're in like a grindier blue red deck or the red green deck, it kind of looked like we were going to end up in. I can see running it, but I don't think we want to here. It's easy to think about like the ideal scenarios, and yeah, normally like if you do get to cast it, it's going to have a big impact on the game. But you know, paying four for a two-two, not a great thing in this format. Um, yeah, I do think we need to run at least one of these, and maybe we'll splash both. We could probably pull off both. But yeah, I think we cut the pummelers in the end. Rural Recruit, probably not great for us either. Yeah, I'd rather have the Hunter at the top of our curve than the Pummeler. And I may even cut the Hunter and just leave in Celebrants as our top curve. So, we've got two Dawnheart Disciples. Are we an Apprentice Sharpshooter deck? And probably not. So, yeah, I think we end up... I mean, we do have, you know... The, the Werewolf deck does have Mana Sinks and stuff, too. Um, so... Yeah, if you get to do the Halpak Piper things, uh, then, yeah, it can be pretty bonkers. And, yeah, this is a big thing we can put into play with it. Not sure that's enough of a reason to keep it around, but... I think maybe we're not really the deck that wants to play this and stabilize. We're the deck that wants to kill people quickly. Um, yeah. Yeah, the other thing about the Pummeler is it is good with Helana and Elena, but I feel like overall we'd rather just be curving out and whatnot than um, than doing that nonsense. So I think it's probably going to be Flourishing Hunter that gets cut here. And we still have plenty of wolves and werewolves. I mean, we have seven wolves and eight werewolves. That is plenty for our payoffs. Um, I probably want to try to get Massive Might into this deck the way we've switched um and maybe we can cut one of our two drops it might be Dawnheart disciple just because yeah i mean it's going to grow a lot but but not that often i mean um it's probably better to leave in the Sporeback wolf in this particular deck so yeah i think we go down to one disciple and then we go down to one planes Um, we don't have any double red, do we? That's interesting. I think I'd probably still go with... Eh. <laughs> do I go with seven? Yeah, I mean, we have two drops that we really want to play, so... Yeah, I think that's our mana base. I think it is worth splashing these. They're both powerful enough to be worth it, and our fixing is good enough that I'm not super concerned about it. Um, yeah. No, the only reason I don't want to go 16, basically, is our splash. Like, if I cut our splash, it would be easy to go 16. But not... If we go 16, that would involve going down on forests or mountains at this point, and we don't want to do it. Um, so, we if we do that, our mana base will be real bad. So, I think we have to run 17 if we're splashing. And we are, so... We also have blood and uh, not a lot of it, but we have blood and, and uh, the mana sink. So running that many lands doesn't come with as much of a risk as it can. Okay, I do think we can keep this. 
We need to find one of them forests, but... Hey, we did it. Yeah, if this deck curves out well, our opponents will be dead, it's true. And that's why we sort of had to say goodbye to Magma Pummeler. A card you really don't want in your <laughs> opening hand in a deck like this. Um, good chance they have Syncopate or something, but I don't think we can really, like, play around it. Uh, we're just gonna... Okay. They might just bounce him, I guess. I'd be okay with it. They're doing something. Yeah, bounce. So we probably play our Stalker next. See if they let us resolve it anyway. Um... Okay, so next turn we can play Halana and Elena and start going off, potentially. Um, that's probably our game plan. Yeah, we have to deal with Whispering Wizard now, huh? So, I could go a less... Like, a route where Halana and Elena... Come down later and like play two two drops here instead but that's probably not worth it i mean there is a good chance they kill halana and elena here but we're gonna get the two counters and a removal spell out of their hand so i'm not too upset about it it would be great if she's if they stick around but uh yeah She is indeed abradable. And if they didn't have Whispering Wizard in play, that exchange wouldn't be terrible. But Whispering Wizard in play, giving them a 1-1 too, does hurt our value, our value a little bit, unfortunately for us. But we'll see. Maybe they don't have an answer. And if they don't, things are about to get real bad for them. I mean, we can play... Okay, looks like we're going to hold on to it for a turn. All they can do... Yeah. Okay. Well, that's mm, interesting. Do they know this has first strike? Do you think this is a bluff? They only have one red mana. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I think I'm blocking if that's what they're doing. So it's probably best here to play the Mariner. Give it counters and then attack with both. Yeah. And we'll get our planes as well. Yeah, I think that's the plan here. So, next we go to combat. Rumble with the two big boys. They can double block one, but... Halana and Elena doing what you expect. Nice. Well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If you play Halana and Elena and it doesn't die, it's pretty hard to lose. Even if they do die after, like, one trigger, it's kind of hard for you to lose. Two triggers, it's pretty much it. So... All right. <clears throat> Let's just see if we can curve out and play Alana and Helena. Helena and Elena every game. Why did they have to make their names so similar? <laughs> Makes it harder to say, but also I guess it sort of rhymes. Seems more like they're meant to be if they have names like that. <laughs> Hopefully our opponent doesn't have that Soren, huh? Ooh. 
I do think it's a keeper. We're on the draw. We do have a two drop, and if our Weaver gets down, we're kind of in business. Um, but we do really need to draw a mountain, so. Good chance we do. Good chance we do. Okay, well, that's not a mountain, but it basically is. Between the draft and our two games thus far, you know, one full game and then this first land, we've uh, been asking for things and just getting them, so maybe that'll keep happening, you know? Maybe it's a Christmas miracle. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to do this now, <clears throat> just so I don't forget to do it. I mean, it's easy to forget things sometimes when you're streaming, so... Okay. Dawnheart Disciple it is. Ooh. Straight up three color deck? Play our Weaver. Attack with our Disciple. So we can play Halana and Elena next turn. If our Weaver is still alive. Oh my god. You don't see a whole lot of this in this format. <laughs> uh oh. So we both have Alana, Halana and Elena, but they played theirs first. Which might not bode well for me. Um, so let's play them. Feels like a mirror match, other than the, like, 8 million colors they're playing. Um, we're going to do the Disciple, and we're just going to swing with it. You think they're going to play an island now? Okay, well, that's not good. They had an answer before we do. For uh, Halana and Elena, that probably means we're going to lose. But we can't give up hope yet. We can kill the big creature. They, they're they buffing, at least. I mean, that's a thing. Um, Falcon Wrath Celebrants seems intriguing. I think that is what we play here. And pass the turn. I wonder whether I should give up blood here in an attempt to find removal. How many things do I have that can actually kill Halana and Elena? I feel like Rending Flame is the only one. Because our Circle and our Valorous Stance don't do it. Um, so... Unless she gets bigger. unless If they get bigger, we can kill it. Um, so we could draw our Massive Might and use it... <laughs> Use it on their creature? That would do it. <laughs> so there's a couple cards we could draw. One of them does two for one ourselves. I feel like they must be a base green deck with a bunch of bombs. The way their mana looks. I didn't think there was much value in keeping the stance open. I don't really plan on... Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> so they're going to get to draw a card here. And then it's going to... Luckily, they don't get to draw another card. I'm going to have to kill that Cloak Cadet, though. I think it's a bigger problem than anything else over there. And I can do it with my stance, luckily. Um, Let's see. Do I want to throw away a Ridge Wolf to try to find a more meaningful card? I don't hate that plan. But I, just having bodies matters. I mean, they are at 12. That's the good news. Um, so just, just getting bodies in play, especially with Child of the Pack, I think it matters enough that I don't want to do it. Okay. So we're just going to kill the Cadet now. 
I guess we can do it in response to them putting in counters on it next turn, which is better. There's a chance they can do something about it, but it's not like a super high chance, so... Yeah, so let's play our Child of the Pack here. So, in case our Weaver dies, like, at the end of our turn... Well, I guess I can just stance in response. Yeah. So let's play Child of the Pack here. And then play... Do we want to play the Forest? Or hold on to it to have things to discard? I mean, now that we have a Mana Sync ability, I think playing the Forest here is fine. Um, yeah. We'll pass the turn. It is sad when you draft an awesome bomb and you win your first game with it and then your second opponent plays it. <laughs> and you play yours too, but they kill yours. I mean, we got some value out of it, luckily. That's, I mean, we wouldn't have been able to compete with Helana and Elena at all if we hadn't played our own Helana and Elena. Well, that's bad. Makes me want to kill Weaver Blossoms a little bit more. Uh, but I think Cloak Cadet drawing them cards is a bigger problem for us than um, a big creature. If we're going to have any chance at all, anyway. Let's see where they put these counters. I guess they don't have to put them on the cadet because the cadet uh, will train. So we'll just go ahead and kill the cadet while we can. Yeah, yeah. They're being very defensive for someone with Holana and Elena in play, but I guess they are at 12, so they have to consider these things. All right, I do think I throw this land away. Do I also throw this one away? Probably. I mean, I need to find an answer, or are we dead, so... Um, yeah, I can deal with Paxong Pup or one of these big weavers with it. I guess the biggest weaver is probably the best option. Paxong Pup is going to be a problem in the future, but it came down late enough that I'm not super alarmed about it just yet. I think killing their 6 7 seems pretty good. And then we'll play our Ridge Wolf. We are officially out of gas. <clears throat> we really need to draw our red removal spell which I think is literally the only card in our deck that can kill Halana and Elena. We have a 1 in 23 chance, which isn't great. That sounds like horrible luck, Kiki, that everybody had by invitation only. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. So, they're like a base green deck that opened a bunch of bombs. <laughs> I don't think we can win this now that Edgar has joined the party. Oh, we can kill Halana and Elena, but now that doesn't really feel like it's enough, does it? So if I pass here, their tra werewolves transform, but so do mine. I think mine transforming is more meaningful, and then I can rending flame Halana and Elena on their turn. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what we do here. Uh, 
Also means I can use Child of the Pack's ability, which is useful. All right, so then Rending Flame, get them out of here. Still have Edgar to deal with, which is potentially even harder. I guess I should have made a werewolf, huh? I could have, I mean, a wolf token. I could have made a wolf token before the transformation. <clears throat> I think we're completely out of removal now, so we've been lucky to even draw enough to make it this far. <laughs> Yeah, I had the mana to make one wolf, which would have been potentially useful. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, our opponent has a, one of the nastiest decks I've seen in this format. They have plenty of fixing. Mulch is sort of powering things for them as well. I mean, we haven't seen it yet, but I was, you know, they were kind of lucky with their mana early, maybe. But I bet they have a couple of mulches to power through this and then, like, reanimation and disturb things. It's crazy. They can cast it from their graveyard next turn. <laughs> Which is not great for us. Actually, they can cast it now. Because of uh, Blossom Clad Werewolf. <clears throat> we have a good attack for a turn. Um, <laughs> so I guess that's what we're going to try. Oh, except they did that. So we don't even have a good attack for a turn. Okay. Let's see how it is. Well. If I'd made one more werewolf, I may have actually... Uh, one more wolf on a previous turn, I may have actually had a chance. But I didn't. So... <laughs> but really, like, the amount of damage we have right now, we really might have had a chance. Um, we might still, I mean... Oh my god, if they played the... Yeah, the Averbrook Caretaker. Night mode Averbrook Caretaker. So, they can't double spell here. We got a bit of a shot. Pack Song Pup unfortunately gains them life, which is not good for us right now. So, they can go up to 17, basically. So, even if I swing out here, um, yeah, I don't think it's going to do it, thanks to Pack Song Pup. We have one more turn, but the fact we drew a land... To me, means... I mean, I don't know how we're going to get through. Neville Gaspa Geiler is going to ruin our lives. I think we just swing out here and hope they screw up. Because, like, yeah, there's, there's no way we're going to win in time. Yeah, yeah. If they didn't gain five life off of this, you know, earlier I was like, I'm not that worried about it. Well, maybe I should have been. Because <laughs> the five life they're going to gain from it is not awesome for us. So... On the bright side, enough stuff's going to die that they can't kill us right away. Um, so if we draw something really great, I don't know what it could be at this point, but something. <laughs> Maybe we'd have a shot, but... I guess this is the only creature they're losing. And taking eight, yeah. So maybe not, because I'll give this first strike... 6, 11. No, it's still not going to be lethal. Okay. Yeah. Hold on to this land. They didn't screw up, in case you're wondering. 
I mean, I didn't really think they would at this point. If only they were at four, huh? We would have gotten in for like three more that turn if I'd been smarter. Yeah, that's pretty much game. They still don't want to attack us. They want to win with Sinner's Judgment. <laughs> well, that was rough. Our opponent had an awesome deck with lots of fixing and mulch and stuff. Again, I do think their mana was a little lucky early. Uh, they, like, played... Their first four turns, they played a different basic land. So... Um... That was a little bit lucky, but their deck was still awesome. <laughs> yeah, we keep this. Um, we keep going second, which is unfortunate. Our deck... Our deck's kind of on hard mode when it goes second, I feel like. We are drawing our, our mana. Whatever color mana we really need, we're getting it, you know? And that's been nice. <clears throat> okay. I think we do attack here, because if they just want this to die and my creature not to die, we're down with it. And they're just going to take one, obviously. I mean, that's what's going to happen. <clears throat> they're just going to take one. Then we'll play our Ridge Wolf. That's annoying. So I can play Circle of Confinement anyway. Um, trying to decide if it's worth attacking with my Ridge Wolf. If they want to double block and their trainee dies, I think I'm okay with it. Um, and if they just single block, that's fine too. I mean, it's not really going to matter. So... I guess the one thing about leaving the Ridge Wolf back is it means the Sharpshooter will have a harder time attacking us and surviving. But we can also just kill it with Circle of Confinement. So I'm not that alarmed about it. And then if they just take three, I think we like that even more. So I think we attack. We kind of hope that they decide not to block... And are afraid of a trick, which we do have a massive might in our deck. Nice. We get in for three. Play our Weaver. So, I guess they probably put the knife... Where do they put the knife? Do they put it on their Sharpshooter or their Trainee? It's kind of the question. <clears throat> That is the question. And that's the question they're asking too. Where do I put this knife? <laughs> Interesting. That, that's not really what I was expecting to happen. Um, hmm, there's our Halpack Piper. Probably just play another Weaver and our Circle of Confinement here. Circle the Sharpshooter. Circle the sharpshooter here. And... Hmm. Do I just want to attack with both? And then play... If they block, I can pump. Yeah, I think that's definitely worth it. And if they just take it, I play our other Weaver, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, so, so yeah, they could double block it. But, yeah. 
So now we play our other Weaver. So, we go ahead and block this. There's a reasonable shot they have a trick here, but um, I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So we've got six mana. I kind of want to use it to play both of these. Um, however, obviously. Because, yeah, if I play both, I untap next turn and Runebound Wolf will be completely nuts. So we'll attack with both of these. Kill our Ridge Wolf, sure. You have massive might as well. You go to 10. Get a blood token. We play Howl Pack Piper. Runebound Wolf. So if we don't draw a card, we get to transform this. I mean, if we don't play a spell, if we don't draw a spell is what I mean. We get to transform this and draw a card, which is obviously pretty cool. They may kill our Runebound Wolf here, which I think would be wise. I mean, it's kind of a, pr a massive problem for them right now because <laughs> it has them on a very quick clock. And they're, I mean, they're at 10, so yeah. Well, that is that is the problem with Sigarda's Imprisonment, isn't it? I can still tap this for mana, and uh, if they put it on this or this, they still would have had their abilities too. So it's like, it's hard. So I could use this to play my Ridge Wolf, thus getting to trigger the ability, and that's probably what, we, what we're going to want to do. Um, yeah, so I think we attack with our Snarling Wolf. We just get in for one, I think. I mean, it's tempting to go for the full three, but... Wait, I might as well, huh? Yeah. Yep, I might as well. Hmm. I could almost just use this ability and drop them to three, but I think it's probably just better to put our wolf into play. So this is going to trigger, become bigger, give us our, um, a card, hopefully. I mean, it's pretty hard to whiff when you look at the top six. It can happen, but there's probably a creature in our top six cards, is what I'm saying. Hmm. Yeah, if I tap my mana differently, not using this, since it was going to change to two mana, that might have been interesting. Um... I guess if it's still nighttime, Child of the Pack is definitely better. We'll just grab the child. Edgar's back, but I think we're going to beat it this time. Thank goodness. Still going to be night, so we play this, and it gives hit plus one, plus zero to our whole board. Plus the Runebound Wolf's ability... I mean, the Runebound Wolf's ability almost on its own is enough to kill our opponents, so.
Yeah, so we played Child of the Pack here. Everybody gets bigger. Yeah, and then we hold up the Runebound Wolves ability. <clears throat> All right. See if we can go first. We need an e we need some easy mode here. I don't. We haven't gone first at all yet. Is that correct? I feel like it's correct. Could be wrong, but <laughs> I feel like it's not. I guess we might have in our very. No, I don't think we did. In every hand, I think we were on the play and had kind of crappy mana, but then drew into the mana we needed. So. I can't complain that much, because I think it's happened literally every hand so far. Where I needed one land of a different color than I had, and I drew it, so, you know. Well, we're going first, <laughs> but this isn't really a hand where we want to be. <laughs> so, we have to mulligan this. Alright. <laughs> this hand's not great for us either, but it's better than the other one was. So... I think we get rid of a mountain. I feel like vampires on Innistrad must be stronger flavor-wise if we're just talking about the story. But I also don't follow the flavor that closely, but it just feels like they're better. <laughs> so we've drawn both our white cards, which is... Not great. Uh, we don't have our white mana. So far, our splash has actually been pretty helpful for us so far. Um, but we are, you know, like I said, we've drawn really well so far. Aha! So the annoying thing here is I can't play my rips off if I play this, but I think it's probably... I think that's probably okay. Hmm, is it? I'm not in desperate need of either of these, and playing the Ripsaw and equipping it could be pretty important. You know, we're just going to play the Ripsaw here. They probably block. If I hadn't played my Ripsaw first, they wouldn't have blocked, so that was kind of dumb of me. Um, yeah, that was not a great call on my part. I was just thinking, why would I block this thing in us first strike? Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Oh, God. Now I wish I'd gotten that white mana right away. Jeez. Alluring Suitor is nasty. And reasonably likely to transform this next turn. Um, crap. So I think we just have to pass and hope our Hungry Ridge Wolf can stand up to this. I do love this card. It's an uncommon I really enjoyed playing with. You know, I generally like grindier decks. They're not ultra viable in this format, but... An aggro card like this one is one that I can get behind. It's just got such a cool design. So we're going to grab a planes. I'm hoping our 5-5 five five is just big enough that attacking here isn't easy for them. They're probably about to play... Well, even Creepy Puppeteer doesn't really get through a 5-5, five five, does it? Not really. Yeah, they're going to need something. 
He does give them two mana. Okay, it looks like they're actually not going to be able to attack us. Thanks to the large Ridge Wolf. Thank you, large Ridge Wolf. Let's grab this Plains. That we so desperately need. Okay. Play this fearful villager. Um. Hmm. Okay, yeah. So let's play Circle of Confinement here on the suitor. If they ever play another one, we get to gain two life, so look out. And then we can actually attack. Um, uh, can we? <laughs> I guess they can block. But they have to double block. So I think we're down with that. <clears throat> after all, we can just stick it on our fearful villager after this. So, yeah. We can kill the socialite at some point when they buff it, um, if we have to. Right now, I don't really feel like we have to. Play another one of these. That's an, an achievement to unlock right there, to actually gain two life off of this. Has anybody done that yet? I mean, I'm sure they have, but not a whole lot. Using our stance for indestructibility might be interesting in the near future on our Ridge Wolf. It's just going to almost never happen, especially, I mean, if we'd, if we'd hit a Blood Petal Celebrant or a Socialite, I guess it would have been more likely to go our way. Did they just pass the turn here? I can't imagine they do. Oh. That was mean. Okay. Well. Do we just try to race them here? Kind of think we do. Yeah, you'll be big enough next turn to kill them all on your own, actually. So, because I'm not going to play a spell this turn. So, we attack... We do not give a trample. I guess maybe they chump lock? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we have six mana. Do we need six mana? Oh, they can't chump lock. They have to double block because of menace. So there's no real reason to give a trample, I don't think. Next turn we might. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't realize it had menace. Uh... Okay, so we pass. This will grow. He's lethal on his own now. This fearsome werewolf. If they have removal, we can save it with Valorous Stance. Unless, of course, it's bleed dry, which... Oh, okay. That's not fun. Okay. I can kill it, and maybe that's the move here. Probably is. Yeah, so we're going to Valorous Stance on ya. Yay, another thing we can actually play. So this turn, I think we give a Trample. Oh, I probably should have played my Wolf first. If I were, if I were smart, that's what I would have done. <clears throat> yeah, so... Drop them to five, kill their whole board. Play a Snarling Wolf. Equip it with the Ripsaw. They do a bunch of blood, which can help them find a way out of this, potentially. It is nighttime, which could come in handy. Hmm, interesting. Oh, I guess... <laughs> I guess they couldn't really lose the life to cast point in discussion. I forget it does that. Well, felt good to win that game because I we were definitely not firing on all cylinders. We were like really not drawing super well for the most part. We were just like all in on our, our rip saw making 
one creature at a time really big. And I, if our opponent had ever had removal, that would have been a problem. But luckily for us, they didn't. So, <laughs> so we just kept going at them with our large wolves and werewolves. But that definitely, in terms of like how things played out for us, that was probably actually our worst game. But our, you know, we had a really good everything against the opponent we've lost to that we lost to. But um, <laughs> they had better everything, so then you know, we got going a lot better than we did in that game, though. All right, good hand. Uh, basically, exactly what we want to see. I guess if we had a one drop, that would be better. But we only have, I think we only have one of that wolf, so. But we have a two drop, a three drop. We've got our mana for Valorous Stance. Um, that's a cool planes. Um, hmm. Interesting. So I think Dawnheart Disciple is actually the better play here because it'll be a 3 3 next turn. And the Runebound Wolf, you know, if it was my only two drop, I would have played it. Wow, they have fancy lands. I don't even know what they're from. <clears throat> okay so i don't think we play the wilds we'd rather play the weaver right now we'll play it eventually um which will like lock us in on our planes which will be good Yeah, the saw is nice. I do think it gets a little clunky in multiples. Like, we, we could have had two. And maybe, maybe we even drafted two. But I just feel like if you have more than one, you're kind of... It, this format's fast enough that you're in a bit of trouble. But one and basically every green deck is something I'm interested in. I guess if you're a grindier deck, maybe not. But even then, it's not a bad win condition. Well... They did gain life, but luckily it didn't matter. Um, okay. So. I think we attack with both our creatures here. Um, the mana here doesn't do us, doesn't give us anything we, we can't already do for the most part. So I think it's actually worth attacking. They may trade with our disciple. No, they decided not to. Um... So we, I, I think we play the wilds. And do we play the ripsaw or the wolf? Probably the ripsaw. Yeah. And then we end our turn. So the black white life gain deck is pretty sweet in this format, and our opponent has the. Oh my! So luckily we'll be able to kill that when it gets too big, but. Um, it is scary. You know, that's the, the best life gain payoff in the set, pretty much. So I think we grab a planes with this, just in case we lose our weaver at some point. Okay. Got some interesting choices here. This is going to become a 4-4 next turn, so I think having the mana up to destroy it seems pretty appealing. Um, kind of thinking, equip Ripsaw, leave up Valorous Stance. But... Play Runebound Wolf... Leave up Valorous Stance. Eh, I think equipping the Saw is better. Um, yeah. And then we'll just rumble with the Big Disciple. So the annoying thing is they can get it back with their Blood Fountain, but I'm hoping that'll be slow enough that we don't really care. That's what I'm hoping. Man, did I screw up mana again? I did. I keep forgetting to account for this transforming because I could have played the wolf. Oh, it wouldn't have transformed if I played the wolf, though. Right. So that wouldn't have done anything. <laughs> I didn't screw up that time. 
So now that becomes a 4-4. Four, four. So they do have the mana to get it back right away, which is kind of unfortunate for us. Uh, so I think we wait to see if they're going to play something else. We'll take the 3 here. Yeah, they're not going to. I think we still kill it, unfortunately. I mean, I do want to kill it, but they have the mana up right away, just because they have the mana up. We are going to be able to rumble for a bunch, is the good news. So, I like that part. And playing, like, Celebrants when they're low on life it tends to feel pretty good. Um, either of these when they're low on life feels pretty good. Three, four, five, six... Eight. So we can actually play both of them if we don't attack with our wolf. But I think attacking with our wolf seems very much worth it here. There's a chance one of them is dying. Um, let's find out. We do have a bunch of mana, so... If they do use the mana, they can't get their voice back. That's the plus side. But there is a chance they have bleed dry or something here. They do. All right. So, yeah, we want celebrants now that we have no other wolves or werewolves. That's for sure. It's a good thing to put our... Ripsaw on. That's for sure. That's annoying. Okay. So I don't think we use the blood here. I do think we want to use it now, though. Another werewolf, huh? I can get behind that. Um, it is nighttime as well. I don't think that matters a ton, though. So, I can make this a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, so... Uh, no, actually I can't because the werewolf side is just a werewolf. So I think we swing with both our creatures here. Um, they kind of... No, they don't really have to block both, do they? I could just move the Ripsaw to Celebrants and attack. That makes it so they can't transform this farmer. And then play our Runebound Wolf. But I think even if the Farmer transforms, we're in kind of okay shape here. Yeah. Oh. Nice. They can get them back, of course. That's their uh, thought process there. But I was a little more worried about that thing transforming... Okay, so I don't think we try to flash because we'd rather just play both creatures. Even if this does make it smaller, I think going wider is better, so. Yeah, so they can get stuff back, but I think it's going to be too slow here. And they tapped their mana in a way that I would have tapped my mana in that situation. Because they could have played this and gained a life and made it a 3-3. And all of that would have been pretty spicy. Ooh, So we can do three with this now, huh? Um, okay. Yeah, so... We're going to play the pup in our first main phase, um, both so that sacking a forest makes more sense, and so it gets the counter. Okay. 
They do get to gain two, unfortunately, for us. So I don't think they're 100% dead. They're just basically dead. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and sack a forest. Oh no, yeah, they are dead. Nice hand. You know, an early werewolf would make it a little nicer, but we do have, you know, some of the best cards in our deck in our hand, so. I can live with it. Yeah, we've been so lucky with our mana. I don't think there's been a single game where we've really had problems because of it. Uh-oh. Drawing a our one drop wolf would have been nice on turn one, but you know. So we'll probably kill this thing at some point with our circle. I don't find it to be super important just yet. You have a free attack. Take your free attack, yeah. I can't do anything about that. Hmm, massive might. Uh okay. So this next turn we probably play our Halpack Piper. Hopefully it lives. If it does, then we play Child of the Pack with its ability. Then it transforms, and things get crazy. Um, so do I want a Circle of Confinement something here? You know, like that Apprentice Sharpshooter. Um, maybe. This is a bigger problem in most decks, but their deck's not likely to be heavy life gain or heavy blood. So, it's still going to be good, but I don't think it's going to be the end of the world for us. Uh, the Sharpshooter presents more of a problem, even for our larger creatures. Neither of them are that great, frankly, but yeah, I think we go with the Circle on Sharpshooter here. And then we pass the turn. <clears throat> Should have hit the vampire, so I might have gained that life. So we have to take this. We could try to block and use massive might, but that would be a really bad idea. Okay, so there's a very, very, very good chance that they have bleed dry. And with that in mind, I think it's a pretty good idea to play around it. And I'd much rather have this oak shade stalker die than anything else. So we're going to do that. Um, we also set up day and night so that if our opponent decides to pass the turn again next turn, our Halpack Piper can come in face up. Okay, they did not have bleed dry. I was a little paranoid, but I think it I think it was right to be. Uh, we still end up in a pretty good situation here. Okay. Go to combat. You guys both get fucked. Well, not both, but you're both huge. That's the point. Wow, so I think they're just... What do they have in their hand that they're not playing? I don't know, but I'm going to play my Halpack Piper now because it's nighttime and I get the trigger. Ooh, hello. <laughs> okay. We're in business, I'd say. I can't understand what they would have. A board sweeper? I don't know. So, Child of the Pack, face up. Three, four, five, six. Is Child of the Pack face up better than Helana and Elena here?
me and face up. It's going to be pack mate, the pack mate side. Um, so it'll pump everything. I think that's actually a little better on this particular board state. Yeah, we just swing out here and then we have massive might to finish the job. Basically, is what we're looking at. Yeah, so... We use Massive Might there. We trample for... Actually, it's not enough to do lethal, is it? Because this gets in for five. Then we pump like this, and it tramples over for five. Yeah, it's not actually enough to do lethal. If we do it here... Tramp yeah, so we can only do ten to them. So it's probably not really worth it. Um... Which means maybe Helana and Elena were better, huh? And we end our turn. Well, they got their fifth land. Let's see if a thing happens. No. <laughs> I don't know what was going on there, but... The win's a win. Could have had a bunch of really situational cards. I don't know. The, the other possibility was that they had, like, a board sweeper. But I wasn't super worried about that. But maybe I should have been. I'm happy at 5-1. See if we can push it push it further. Okay, good hand. Weirdly, have we seen this card at all? We have like two of them, and I don't think we have. Could be wrong. Hmm, that's nice. I'd say Helana and Elena are only straight up bomb. We do have that Halpak Piper, which if you're consistently casting it on the uh, backside, I'd say it is a bomb. Um, and we've done that a few times, so... Yeah, we have a bunch of, like, B-pluses, Bs, and then, yeah, Halana and Elena, which is... I'm trying to remember where I had them. They were, I know they were in my top ten list. I feel like I had them at seventh or eighth. Yeah, that's... That's nice. Are you guys humans? You are humans. Um, does that mean I'd rather play Dawnheart Disciple here? Probably. It's probably about to die. <laughs> Maybe I should have played the 2-4 just because it would have been harder for them to kill it. See you later, Hydra Maze. Happy holidays. Take the 2 to the face. Ow. So here's this situation where it's like, do we want to play Helana and Elena? I mean, the fact is, they... Oh, God, they could have a braid. I could try to play around it a little. It's not like I don't have a pretty good play that isn't Alana, Helana and Elena. I could play my Mariner and attack them. Uh, yeah, and attack them. <laughs> um... I think given the fact that they're in the colors they are and a braid is a common, I'm just going to play the Mariner here. And we'll, we'll wait a little while on Halana and Elena. And yeah, we'll attack. If they want to trade, I think we're down. I guess if they have a way to discard... Oh, they don't have white mana untapped anyway. I was going to say, if they have a way to discard and... Yeah... Seeing more three-color decks today than I have, like, three-plus-color decks than I have in a long time. Yeah, there's Bleed Dry. 
<clears throat> now they're tapped out, so we know we're gonna get at least one trigger out of Halana and Elena. So I think I think now that is what we want to do, because now we get the trigger. It's getting a little dangerous to race here. Our opponent has so much life, but I think we're still gonna we're still gonna try. I think circle plus spore back could be pretty sweet for us. I'm hoping they're afraid to attack us. The thing is, like, I kind of have to... Okay, I am glad. I'm glad they didn't attack us. Because if they had, I would have just had to take it, basically. Um, yeah. So, who do we want to deal with here? This can, this can flicker itself, but they would get rid of the card in their hand. This doesn't trigger... If they discard a card on their turn, on my turn, only on their turn, it's a weird quirk about this card that it's good to remember if you're playing with it, because it seems a little weird that it's that restrictive, but it is. Um, so we've got, we can play everything in our hand and really go nuts here. It's just a question of how do I want to go about doing it? And I think we probably get rid of the recluse. We don't really want it to transform. Flickering the Fleeting Spirit. I mean, there's some value to be had in making them discard their last card, but not really. <laughs> like, I think we just play the circle here and hit the Recluse. Although, they do have three cards in their graveyard, I guess. Interesting. Still, I think we hit the Recluse here. Then we go Sporeback Wolf. Hungry Ridge Wolf. Put the counters on the Hungry Boy. And attack with both of these. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, so they're going to give this first strike. Uh, we'll just kill the Blood Petal Celebrant. We do get to Trample still, which is great for us. Um, in terms of damage. Still kill the Celebrant. Um... They're not going to be able to use this again. Also makes Blood Fountain awkward for them. So I think I think we're pretty happy with how all of that went. Drop them to five. Wait. Why? Why did that die? Oh, because I still did the damage. Yeah, so that was... Kind of unnecessary for them. I mean, I guess it killed my creature instead of something else happening, but they could have more effectively blocked our disciple. Okay. It's not nighttime, but I think we're still happy with this draw. It's another creature to give haste to. and Yeah, so these are both lethal. The two five fives will be lethal. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of assumed my creature was just going to die when they use that ability without really like actually looking at its toughness. All right. Got two shots here to get to 7 wins. I have I think I've only had like Four or five seven win decks in this format. I've had a lot of sixes. A lot of six ones turn into six threes too. <laughs> Which that's six three is a great record, but <laughs> it's been kind of funny. This is a slow hand, but I do think we keep it. We've got all our mana. Um, you know, chances are reasonable that we draw something we can play earlier, given what our curve looks like. And even if we don't, you know, this hand looks like it has the capacity to be grindier. It's funny to draw a massive might there, but luckily I'm not super worried about the crawler. I mean, it's it can be a problem in the extreme late game. In the early game, it's just like a mediocre creature for the most part. So I'm not super afraid of it. Um, that might be a problem. They can transform it pretty easily. So I think we play our Weaver here. <clears throat> Okay, I like the mana. Ooh, now I really like the mana. 
So they could have counter magic here. Um, let's try to play Pack Song Pup. You have four mana, so let's go to combat. Uh oh, Arena. Arena seems to have frozen on me. Doesn't want me to get seven wins. Hmm. Well. <laughs> I don't really want to close the program. I'm worried that'll take too long, but maybe that is what we need to do. Yeah. Okay. We may end up missing that turn, which is gonna suck. Because we're about to play that hook hand uh, Mariner. It's so weird, like the times Arena chooses to, to freeze. We've had like way more complicated board states and nothing happened. And then it was like, nah. Kind of looks frozen again. Okay. Oh, okay. No attacks. Uh, and then we'll play our Mariner. This might get syncopated. But that's... That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That is fine. So they could exploit something at some point in the very near future. Wouldn't love it. Okay, so I think we play... Child of the Pack here for the buff. They could have a counter magic again, but... Um, do I want to attack with my blossom-clad werewolf? Maybe. Yeah, I think we do. Although if I don't, I can play Sporeback Wolf. These will be, yeah, you know what? I don't think I'm going to attack. I'm just going to play Sporeback Wolf here. Okay. Well... Lots of options here. Um, I really wish this exiled a spirit, too. It feels like it should. If they wanted to hate on spirits, they should have also had it exile a thing if it's a spirit, I think. Um, okay, so they've only got two mana up. Let's go to combat before we do anything else. And I think because I have massive might, I'm willing to take a bit of a risk here and attack with both of these. I have Rending Flame, too. Both of them can really wreck the uh, situation. Okay. Uh, they could be able to bounce our creature. But I think I'm, I'm, I'm okay with taking that risk. I think we go Massive Might... Doesn't look like they can. So that really messes them up. Their Desperate Farmer does transform. Um, 
but we can rending flame it. It's a question of whether I want to just do that now. Uh, or wait. They could play something that's more of a problem, frankly. Um, kind of thinking I just want to play our Ridge Wolf. Uh, I could also leave mana up for this ability. I mean, we've got a lot of options, so... I think we just pass the turn here. Leave up Rending Flame slash this ability. I think maybe something's about to die. Yeah, I think they have the six mana kill a thing, make two blood. Or, or they have bleed dry. Uh, okay. We don't even get to gain the life. It's not very nice of them. So, if that's their turn, I guess they're also going to stick that aura on something, probably. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is pretty good for them. So, do they attack here? No. Uh, Alright, so we're going to Rending Flame... Then, I think we just swing with all three and then play both of these. I'd rather the Ripsaw not get countered. So they could have a board sweeper. That would get us, obviously, but I feel like we're in good shape. I guess there's probably some bombs I could turn things around. You know, that's not quite like the most impressive bomb in the world, but I think it might get the job done here for them. Um, interesting. So two, four, five, six, we have seven mana. I don't really think this is a bomb, mostly because all it is is a big, scary creature. Um, but it does do a decent job here of helping them stabilize. So who wants to be equipped? You're going to be a 3-4. You're going to be a 5-5 five, five with Trample already. I probably put the Ripsaw on the Weaver. Use this ability... and pass our turn. So the unfortunate thing is they have a decent shot at double spelling here. Um, and if they can untransform our board, we're not gonna be nearly as happy. This thing can definitely take us down. I mean, it just gives such a quick clock. Okay, let's play another, another creature. They did not double spell, and we drew one of the most busted cards in our deck. Okay. Probably the most busted card in our deck, I guess. So. Who wants to get a buff? I guess probably Savage Packmate. Yeah. Then I think we swing out. We give that trample. Nice. Happy holidays, Jason. Is this our, well, that was our seven win, seventh win, wasn't it? Yeah. Kind of forgot. I was thinking that was number six, but I think we got to seven. That deck was nuts. I mean, we had all kinds of good cards and good synergy, and then we had one of the biggest bombs in the set. So that is usually how that's going to go. I mean, 
you know? 